Petri Wine brings you... Basil Rathbone and the New Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to Dr. Watson tell us another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. And say, if you'd like to try a new adventure in good eating... Well, you just make sure that your dinner tomorrow includes a bottle of Petri California Burgundy. Petri Burgundy is the ideal wine with any kind of meat or meat dish. That Petri Burgundy is a hearty wine, just as rich in flavor as it is in color. It's the perfect companion to a thick, juicy steak or a piping hot pot roast or a good hamburger. You know that Petri Burgundy has a happy faculty of turning a simple meal like, say, a hamburger sandwich into a feast. Believe me, here is a wine that's clear, fragrant, and delicious. A wine that you can serve to your friends proudly. Petri Burgundy. Remember, the name Petri is the proudest name in the history of America's wines. And now let's join our good friend, Dr. Watson. I'm out here on the patio, Mr. Bartell. <laughs> well, I see you're making the most of a wonderful evening, Doctor. Oh, oh yes, my boy. Uh, it's pleasant to sit out here on a summer's night with a good friend and a pipe, a bottle of wine. Help yourself to a glass and sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, already with tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure, Doctor? Yes, and a strange story it is. It was in the autumn of 1899, Mr. Bartell, that I decided both as doctor and friend... That Sherlock Holmes was in desperate need of a holiday. He'd really been overdoing it, huh? Oh, yes, my boy. It had been an unusually busy year, and at the time my story begins, Holmes was suffering from complete exhaustion. So, my boy, towards the end of October in that year, we found ourselves in the charming city of Kazanlak, capital of the small Balkan kingdom of Groznia. A few nights after our arrival, I remember Pavlu Krosnodar, Groznian minister of police, took us to hear the singing of a certain young Hungarian opera star, Miss Lily Reyna, who was then touring Europe. At our table was her fiancé, the charming young aristocrat, Prince Stefano. And it was very easy to see as he sat there listening to the song that the boy was head over heels in love. It was a haunting melody that she sang, Mr. Bartell. I can almost hear it now. You're a very lucky man, Prince Stefano. Your fiancée's voice matches her beauty. Oh, yes, Dr. Watson. I consider myself the most fortunate man in Grozny. <laughs> she has a magnificent voice, the finest singing I can recall since... Since when, Mr. Holmes? I was thinking of a prima donna of the Warsaw Opera who attained considerable success in London, Miss Irene Adler. Oh, by George, yes. She was a criminal, one of the few that outwitted you, Holmes. Oh, that was a case that would have interested you, Mr. Krosnodar. I'm familiar with it, my dear doctor. You are unusually solemn tonight, Krosnodar. Have a glass of wine, and I will bring Lily to our table, and we will toast our happiness. I'm afraid I cannot drink to that toast, Prince Stefano. Why not? Oh, I know why. You, the notorious lady killer of Grozny, are jealous. You are in love with Lily yourself. Oh. Prince Stefano, I have sad news for you. I have come here tonight, but for one purpose. To arrest your fiancé. Huh? You are joking. It is far from a joke. At my ministry, we have evidence, conclusive evidence... Miss Lily Reyna is a spy. Spy? Good Lord. And the penalty for spying in Groznia? Ah, that, my friend, is why I would drink no toast. In Groznia, the penalty for espionage is death. Yes, I know, but Holmes, you must do something to save that girl. You can't just turn in for the night without trying to help her in some way. They might shoot her in the morning. Krasnodar's no fool. Since he's made the arrest, obviously, he has a watertight case against the girl. Uh, I suppose so. Oh, 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 one last pipe. You know, Holmes, I couldn't understand her fiancé's behavior. He didn't do a thing. He just stood there and let Krasnodar arrest the girl. Uh, what could he have done? Krasnodar is commissioner of police. There was no point in arguing with him until the evidence had been examined. Mm. I imagine the prince will try and pull some political strings. After all, Grozny... Come in! Come in! Oh, who's this now? Oh, you wish to speak to me? 
Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I've come to talk to you about my baby. My name is Martha Griggett. Your baby? <laughs> Mr. Holmes doesn't... Oh, my baby, she is 20 years old, and she is flaxen-haired and beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's an entirely different matter. We'll be delighted to help you, delighted. Sit down, won't you? On whose behalf have you come to me? Poor Lily Rayner. Lily Rayner? Well, that's the girl who's arrested tonight. I am only her dresser. And yet I'm Martha Greggett. I'm her mother and father. I have toured Europe with her ever since she left Vienna. She sent you to me tonight, I suppose? Yes, mm. Mr. Holmes. She said you would understand. Hmm. What did she mean by that, I wonder? She said that Mr. Holmes would take care that a talent like hers should not perish just because she had broken a few laws. In other words, she wishes me to establish her innocence in the same breath as... She confesses her guilt. I'm afraid I don't take that sort of plan. Good night to you. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. I am glad that you came to my office this morning. I can show you the proof of Miss Lily Rayner's guilt. Oh. As distinguished foreigners, I should like you to know that though the penalty for political crimes is swift and severe... We are most careful that the incriminating evidence is beyond question. Uh, you see these letters? Yeah. We found them sewed into the bodies of her gown. Oh, good gracious me. There are a series of highly dangerous letters from Josip, the uh, leader of the Revolutionary Party with whom she is uh, obviously hand in glove. Uh, here, you may examine them if you wish. Uh, they look like Greek to me. My knowledge of the Groznian language is far from perfect, but these letters certainly seem to incriminate their owner beyond doubt. Uh, you will observe that the, the letters have followed her to each of the cities in which she has been singing. All of them ask questions as to the military garrisons and the chances of a successful revolution. Hmm. She has been a dangerous spy. Yes, I can see that, sir, but even so, isn't the death penalty excessively severe, particularly for a woman? Dr. Watson... The Balkan states are a hotbed of European intrigue. Our penalties must be severe, and we cannot make concessions to the sex of a culprit. This man, Josip, the writer of these letters, have you been able to find any trace of him? None. If only we could. But we have never even seen the man. However, we are fortunate to trap his assistant, and apparently the lady of his choice. Lady of his choice? But she was engaged to Prince Stefano. Uh, undoubtedly a blind. In her home, we found an unsigned love letter in English. It was in the same handwriting as these letters from Josip. Are you satisfied, Watson? Well, I suppose... Obviously, she's guilty. Well, there's no place for me in this affair, particularly when you consider that she made a virtual confession in sending her dresser to me last night. No, I suppose you're right, but just the same. If you want to trap this man, Josip, I should think you'd be wiser to hold the girl as a hostage. It might bring him on the scene if he's afraid she'll talk. If you hang her, you, you'll never find him. Dr. Watson, in my country we found that prompt justice gets the best results. And for your edification, we do not hang in Grosnia. No? The death penalty is exacted at the hands of a firing squad. No. And when is the execution to take place? You have timed your visit well, my friends. Please to step onto the balcony. Oh, dear. I uh, think that answers your question, Mr. Holmes. Great, Scott. Against the wall, blindfolded with the firing squad before her. It's Lily Rayner. Grosnian justice indeed moves swiftly, Mr. Krasnodar. It has to, my friend. Capitano! Mr. Oh. Oh, great Mr. heaven, I can't watch this. I don't care what she's done. I don't want to see it. Up! Two! First! Up! Oh, no. Oh, she's crumbled to the ground. Poor little thing. What an artist. Hard to see a woman executed even if she is a spy. May all traitors to Groznia die as swiftly. Oh, but what a loss. Her beautiful voice. Yes, her beautiful voice. Uh, shall we go in, gentlemen? Holmes, I can still see that poor girl as she crumbled before the firing squad. So can I, old chap. Ah. That's her song you're playing, isn't it? Yes. The melody still haunts me.
You blame me, don't you? Uh, uh, blame you for what? For not preventing her death. Oh, of course I don't blame you, Holmes. The girl was guilty. Grosny in law prescribes the death penalty for her crime. After all, what could you have done about it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And yet... And yet what? I wonder if she was right. I wonder if artistry such as hers isn't of greater value to humanity than spying in any cause. Well, uh, it's not much good worrying about that now, is it? The girl's dead and buried. What's... Uh, what's the matter, Holmes? Did you hear that? I hear what? I could swear that I... Heard the dead girl's voice. She was singing a song to my accompaniment. Oh, oh dear me. Your nerves must be in a very bad state, Holmes. Hearing voices indeed. You'd better turn in for the night. Perhaps. It's a... Well, it may be more my conscience than my nerves. Well, I'll give you a sleeping draft if you like. No, 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 my dear Shepard. I'm all right. It's, it's funny, though. I have sworn that... Oh, well. Play some more of that tune, will you, Holmes? You heard it this time, eh, Watson? Of course I did. It was her voice. There's no mistaking it. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts, and yet I could swear... Shh. Listen. Good Lord, it is her. Shh. Do not let them go and punish the kill me. Who are you? Where are you? In the air about you. Avenge my death. Strike a match, Shall Watson. Strike a match. Yes. Light the gas. Look. Look, 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 there in the moonlight, moving past the window. It's the figure of that girl that was shot today. Matt Watson, I'll guard the door. There. Gas is lighted. She's vanished, Holmes. And not by means of this door. I was standing in front of it. And there's no other exit from the room. Holmes, I don't like this. We're dabbling in the supernatural. Oh, stop trembling, Watson. Whatever the explanation for this may be, one thing at least I find quite fascinating. And what's that? It's the first time in my career that I've ever had a ghost for a client. Dr. Watson will tell us the rest of his story in just a second, so I'm just going to tell you about a wine that adds the perfect finishing touch to a good meal. Petri California Muscatel. With its sunshiny golden color and its full aroma, you just know Petri Muscatel is going to taste good. And it really does. Ah, the flavor of big, plump Muscat grapes picked when they're full to bursting with luscious juice. For the wine that everybody likes, serve Petri Muscatel. You know it's good if it's Petri. Well, Dr. Watson, so you had a ghostly visitor calling on you at the hotel that night, huh? Yes, my boy, and I confess I was so badly shaken by the experience that I, I hardly had to wink all night. Well, the next morning, after an early breakfast, Holmes and I located the proprietor of our hotel and began to question him as to the history of the building. I've admired the architecture of this building ever since you, uh, ever since we came here. A house of this period would uh, undoubtedly have been built with secret passages and staircases. I confess that I know of one secret staircase there. There may well be others. Indeed, and um, where is the one you know of? You wish to explore it, gentlemen? Oh, very much. My friend and I are most interested in such things. Well, follow me, please. Uh, these stairs lead to our wine cellars. <laughs> Thousands of feet have tramped up and down these steps. Only a select few know that behind this tapestry here... Uh, behind this tapestry, gentlemen, is apparently a solid wall. But the wall is not solid. Uh, you have a match, perhaps? Oh, yes, of course. Here you are. Uh, we keep a candle here in this niche for just such an occasion as this. Uh, so, please hold back tapestry, sir. Oh, I, I've got it. Uh, thank you. Now, let me see. One, two, three... Three, four. The fourth brick up from the stair. I press it so, and... Ah. Look, Holmes. Great Scott, a section of the wall swinging up. It's closing a stairway behind it. Ingenious. There, gentlemen. 
Allow me to give you the candle. But uh, aren't you going to lead the way? Uh, no, sir, I'm not going to lead the way, thank you. I have owned this hotel for 32 years, and yet I have never explored this stairway. I... Why, sir? Is it reputed to be haunted? Mm, yes, it is supposed to be haunted. I, uh, the candle, mm, gentlemen. Thank you, I... I'm much obliged to you. Come on, Watson. Uh, I shall wait here. Uh, I don't think I care for this, Holmes. Quite pretty dark in here. Damp and moldy, too. Look, Watson. Huh? Look here. Where's landing? Landing? Well, nothing but dust. Dust and cobweb. A personal chap. There's the faint imprint of a woman's heel here. Huh. Oh, my George, yes. Shoes that have gone both up and down these stairs in the last 24 hours. Exactly. And there's a reverse print over here. Huh. This, my dear chap, I think accounts for the appearance and disappearance of our visitor last night. Yes, but Holmes, it was the singer, Lily Rayner. Yet we saw her shot yesterday morning. Rubbish, Watson, rubbish. What have we to do with walking corpses? Come on, old fellow. Let's see where this stairway leads us to. I know, but then what did we see if we didn't see a ghost last night? That, my dear chap, is what we have to find out. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Staircase ends here. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah, against the blank wall. That doesn't make sense. And yet the entrance to this stairway was an apparent blank wall, too, remember? Let's see if the same formula will do the same trick here. Uh, what was it? Oh, yes. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four bricks up from the step. I press so and... <laughs> Open sesame! The wall swinging back again. What do we see? Another tapestry. A tapestry that uh, is very familiar. Well, I should say so. This hidden door leads into your very own bedroom. Exactly, home. my dear chap. Now we know beyond doubt how the apparent ghost made her appearance last night. Don't you suppose it must have been someone impersonating the dead that, girl? That, my dear fellow, is a question that can only be answered by calling on her fiancé, Prince Stefano. Let's go over and see him at once, shall we? Uh, Prince Stefano, I dislike to intrude upon your personal tragedy, but I must ask you a few questions. Ask your question. Did your fiancée have a sister, a sister who may have resembled her? No. She had no living relatives at all, Mr. Holmes. Well, tell me this. Who inherits her estate, sir? Her dresser. A faithful old woman by the name of DeGregor, who looked after her for some years. I see. Did Miss Rayner have an understudy? As a singer, she could have no understudy. She was irreplaceable. You say as a singer. Uh, was she also an actress? Oh, but yes, Mr. Holmes. Oh, really? A very unusual <laughs> opera singer. Uh, quiet, Watson, please. The first time oh. I saw her was in Tosca. She, she was not another baron now, but... Her performance was very promising one, considering her age. In my country, of course, she was not able to appear in anything but opera because, because she could not speak Rosnian. She didn't speak Rosnian? Now I have the answer. The answer? Yes, to what? To this entire story, from the arrest of your fiancé to certain strange visitations at my hotel last night. What do you mean, Mr. Holmes? If you come to my hotel room tonight, my dear Prince, I can safely promise to make the whole matter clear to you. And I dare go a little further. I think that I can even help you to find consolation in your bereavement. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can see that you wonder why Dr. Watson and I have asked you to come here to our hotel tonight. As Minister of Police, I should be stupid if I did not realize that since your other two guests are the Prince de Mont Martha Gregor, the dead girl's dresser, that this meeting has some bearing on the execution of Miss Lily Rayner. I should prefer to say her murder. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you please, I should like to make my own position in this matter quite two nights ago. You, Martha, came to me on behalf of Miss Lily Rayner to solicit my aid. I, convinced that she was guilty, refused that aid. Yesterday morning, she died before a firing squad. Last night, her ghost appeared to me here in this room and asked me to avenge her death. A ghost? What nonsense are you talking? It would be no surprise to me if her poor murdered soul came back from the grave to ask for justice, sir. I saw her, my good woman, almost as clearly as I see you all now. I agree with Krasnodar. To talk of ghosts is beyond now, belief. Please, let finish. When I had this, this visitation last night, I decided to investigate the case thoroughly. I did so today, and I can assure you that Miss Rayner paid for a crime she did not commit. What grounds do you have for saying that, Mr. Holmes? The letters that were supposedly written to her were in the Groznian language. And yet today, Prince Stefano informed me that she could not appear in the theater here because she did not speak the language. But those letters were sewed <clears throat> into her body's home. That's true, my dear fellow. And who was the only person who had the opportunity to do that? 
The same person who came to me two nights ago and succeeded in convincing me that Miss Rayner was guilty, her own dresser, and supposed friend. Are you suggesting that I'm I... suggesting that you inherited her estate on her death, and that you would have lost that inheritance if she had married and had a family of her own. What do you have to say in answer to that, Martha? That I am among madmen. This talk of ghosts proves it. Very well, then. Let the ghosts support my theories. Hand me the violin, will you, Watson, old fellow? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Now... Turn down the gaslight. Right, sure. That's it. And listen. Yes. Yes. That's her voice. And that's her figure standing there in the moonlight. Even though she's dead. Now what do you say, Martha? Aren't you responsible for our death? If our ghost can sing, I'm sure it can also talk. I did do it. The letters belong to me. I sacrificed my own baby for gold. May heaven have mercy on my soul. A confession in front of four witnesses. Why not take it away, Krasnodar? We'll testify later. I will. Come with me, Martha. I killed my own baby. I deserve to die. Well, shall I... Shall I turn up the gas, Holmes? Ask Prince Stefano. No. Do not turn it up. I've seen... Heard the ghost of my beloved when the lights were down. I'm not afraid. Please play her melody against her home. Aren't you uh, afraid, Prince Stefano? Why should I be afraid? Lily, my beloved, your spirit I know can be no evil one. I love it. I love you living. The pleasure of love lasts but an instant. Love's regrets last for a lifetime. This is now my lifetime, brightened by your gracious ghost. I'm sure this is a very touching scene, but it's getting uh, dreadfully maudlin. All right, Miss Rayner, you may come from behind the tapestry now. What's no chap? Turn up the gaslight, there's a good fellow. Right, you are home. Prince Stefano, permit me to reintroduce you to your far from ghostly fiance, Miss Lily Rayner. Lily! My beloved, you. You are not dead? No, I am not dead. Though I cannot see how Sherlock Holmes fathomed my secret. Huh. And there, my dear young lady, you are in exactly the same boat as I am. Surely the answer is obvious. You gave me the key yourself, Prince Stefano. I did, but how, Mr. Holmes? When you informed me that Miss Rayner had once played the title role in Tosca. Tosca? What's that got to do with anything? Consider Holmes? the plot, Watson. A minister of police who is very susceptible to a lady's charms arranges a false execution. Knowing Mr. Krasnodar's weakness, Miss Rayner. You prevailed upon him to do likewise. Huh. Well, then the whole execution was a piece of pantomime. The rifles must have contained blanks. That's right, old fellow. And what should have heightened my suspicion, Miss Rayner, was the fact that at the moment of your apparent death, Mr. Krasnodar quoted a line from Tosca. He said, What an artist. I was not perceptive enough at the time to evaluate the remark correctly, I'm afraid. When the simulated execution took place, you were free, but uh, assumed dead. But... Why should I indulge in such a trick, Mr. Holmes? You reasoned that, um, had you come to me directly, I might easily have turned you over as a fugitive from justice. And when you decided to dramatize the situation and appear last night as an apparent ghost, you knew it would, oh, well, at the very least, stimulate my curiosity. It would cause me to investigate the matter and possibly to learn the truth and clear you from suspicion. Well, yes, but Holmes, if, if she's innocent, how about the, the love letter in English, which was in the handwriting of Yossip, the revolutionary leader? Well, I can see only one explanation for that. You, Prince Stefano, are that mysterious revolutionary Josip. Stefano? Oh, no, no, that is not possible. Mr. Holmes, you are a visitor in my country. I do not suppose you will be staying here much longer. Stefano, all these months you deceived me. Silence, Lily. Gentlemen, I hope for your own sake you will not be staying here much longer. Oh, I've been threatened by far more imposing adversaries than you, Prince Stefano. I suggest that you leave my room. It's none of my business dabbling in Groznian political affairs. Your secret is safe. In any case, I came to Groznia for a holiday. Goodbye. Huh. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Huh. Well, my soul, um, if we were in London, you wouldn't behave in this offhand way. But we're in Groznia, old chap, aren't we? Hand me the violin, will you? All right, here you are. <laughs> Thanks. You know, Watson, uh, I've only had professional dealings with two singers in my life. The first was... Irene Adler, and she fooled me, oh, so cleverly. And this singer tried to fool you and failed dismally. <laughs> Seems to me the scores oh. are about even. <laughs> oh, chap, no. This one was an amateur. 
Irene Adler will always be the woman. <laughs> ah, well, I think that's enough excitement for one day, don't you? After all, I am supposed to be taking a holiday. Doctor, that was a swell story. And I'll bet that you were a lot more interested in the beautiful Lily than your story tonight would have us believe. <laughs> well, of course I'm interested in a beautiful woman. But then what man isn't? <laughs> Check. <laughs> but don't worry about me, Mr. Bartell. You know, being a family man, I just naturally associate a beautiful woman and home. And that makes me think of hospitality. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, according to you, I'm interested in home life. You, you're primarily interested in wine. Put us together, and we're interested in... Wine in the home. Well, isn't that an important part of hospitality? <laughs> that I admit. But remember, my interest in wine is entirely an interest in good wine. In Petri wine, to be exact. Because I know all about Petri wine. I know that the Petri family has been making wine for generations. With the Petri family, the growing of perfect sun-ripened grapes and the art of turning those grapes into fragrant, delicious wine is a heritage. It's a heritage handed down from father to son, from father to son. The skills of those generations of winemaking are evident in every drop of Petri wine. The name Petri bottle of wine is more than a trademark. It's the personal assurance of the Petri family that Petri wine is always good wine. But you'll discover that for yourself. You'll learn that no matter what type wine you prefer, you'll like it better when it's a Petri wine. Because Petri took time to bring you good wine. Well, Dr. Watson, what new Sherlock Holmes adventure do you have lined up for us next week? Uh, next week, Mr. Bartell, I'm going to tell you a most unusual story in which Sherlock Holmes crossed swords with a famous Frenchman and proved that although the English have been called a nation of shopkeepers, that a murder did not always prove to be a good bargain. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure was written by Dennis Keene and Anthony Boucher and was suggested by an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, The Sussex Vampire. Music is by Dean Fossler. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer. And tonight, Dr. Watson was played by Mr. Joe Kearns, who substituted for Mr. Nigel Bruce. Mr. Bruce is scheduled to return to the program next week. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studio. This is Harry Bartell saying goodnight for the Petri family. For a solid hour of exciting mystery dramas, listen every Monday on most of these same stations at 8 o'clock to Michael Shane, followed immediately by Sherlock Holmes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.